Hello everyone, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. In today's video, we're talking about the seven home items that you don't actually need. You've probably been spending thousands on these pieces, but you don't need them and I'm gonna tell you exactly why. Before we get into today's video though, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram, but let's get into it. So when it comes to designing a home, sometimes we buy too many things because we wanna make sure that all of our bases are covered, right? Because we never wanna be uncomfortable in our own homes. The very first furniture item that you do not need is the chaise sectional. So if you don't know what that is, that basically is a sectional that has a, an, an arm on one end that's just a traditional sofa, and then on the other side, they have a piece that extends so that you can lay down on it. A chaise sectional is something that is very, very popular because people love the idea of being able to lay down on a sofa or even having two people lay on the same sofa. And that is such a wonderful thing, right? Because it is very conducive to spending time with your family. But a lot of the times a chaise sectional is not practical for your space. It will interrupt the walkway or it doesn't actually accommodate as many people as you would think and it really limits the the basic layout of your space because something we talk about all the time on this channel is balancing practicality with something that looks good. And I'll be honest, a shea sectional is very, very practical, but it doesn't always look the best. So it's actually one of those things you don't need. Instead of getting a shea sectional, what you can actually do is get a standard sofa and get an ottoman associated with it. And don't just get a random ottoman, go to the manufacturer and actually buy the associated ottoman so that it matches perfectly in terms of texture, depth, size, and the whole nine yards. This allows you to continue to have the number of seats that you need in a space. Two people can still lay down on that sofa, but it doesn't limit you in terms of layout. Because if you want your space to look beautiful and you don't want something sticking out into the walkway, you can move that ottoman. You can use it in a different room. You can use it as your coffee table. The ottoman is a little bit more versatile. Whereas when you have a traditional shea sectional, it is what it is. You can't manipulate it. And you're here on this channel, which means that you do value the aesthetic portions of this. So we want something that's a little bit more functional. On a more practical level, also think about the fact when you are entertaining a lot of people, sometimes you don't both want to sit on the chaise, right? That doesn't make sense, right? Maybe you don't know one another, maybe you're too close to one another, you can't social distance on it, so what do you do, right? You're not going to tell two strangers to sit on this arm of the sofa together. No, but if you have an ottoman, people can pull apart. It actually gives you more options when it comes to seating, when you're entertaining, which is something that is important when it comes to design. Because when we are crafting our homes, we are thinking about entertaining. We are thinking about gathering. So we want to have as many seats as possible. We do want to be able to lay down. But this, opting for a sofa with an ottoman instead of a chaise sectional, really kills two birds with one stone. The next item that you don't actually need is a chandelier or any type of ornate overhead lighting. So I love chandeliers. I think that they are absolutely phenomenal. And if you have room in the budget for it, of course, get those things. But when it comes to designing a space, we kind of have to think about where we're gonna splurge and where we're going to save. And we really need to be smart about that. And a lot of people say, splurge on your lighting. Well, if you know, you're know you not into light fixtures, I don't know if anyone's into light fixtures, but if you're not into light fixtures, if there are other things, more practical things you'd like to put your money to, I'm saying kind of skip out on the chandelier. So chandeliers exist to, again, carry your design upward. And that's really important. But again, there are so many other ways that you can do that. You can do that with artwork, you can do that with paint, so you can achieve the same goal more affordably. So if it's not in your budget to get ornate lighting, just go with recess lighting. So recess lighting is something that is evergreen. Recess lighting is always going to be popular and it still looks very sophisticated. If a client is speaking to me and they say, should I get a boob light or should I get recess lighting? I'm always going to say recess lighting because the reason why we add so many different types of lighting in a room is because we do so many different things in a room. And you've heard me talk about this before. When you're in a room, you need task lighting, you need overhead lighting, you need lighting for ambiance. Lighting does so many different things because it really helps set the tone of a space. But you can actually accomplish the same thing with recessed lighting if you don't have more expensive lighting in the budget. For example, you can get recessed lights that dim. You can have recessed lights or you know even track lights that you can point at different things. Here's a really good example. So I have track lights in my living space because we have traditional 
all, you know, the, the building still has those original ceilings, right? And they didn't want to add recessed lighting and that to me makes sense. So they have track lighting. Sure, could we put in a chandelier? Yes, but for the space, it's gonna be really expensive and that's just not in the budget right now. But what you can do with recessed lighting and spotlights is you can actually point them at different things. So if you have a room, that's a house that's very gallery-like, you can actually rotate your track lights to you know, look at a particular painting or direct one's eye to a specific part of the room. When it comes to recessed lighting specifically, you can dim that lighting. You can put in specific light bulbs into your recess light that give off a different quality of light. Again, when it comes to lighting, there are so many different variations of light when it comes to Kelvin. So you can have really warm light, you can have really cool light. I talk about this all the time. You can get smart light bulbs. They even have smart light bulbs for recess lighting. So if you want to give off blue light, purple light, green light, you know, I mean, any light, you can facilitate that. And for some people, that actually might be a little bit more affordable than getting that uh, ornate lighting, those shades chandeliers. So I love chandeliers. I think that if you have it in the budget to buy them, buy them. But there is so much power and so much versatility when it comes to that recessed lighting that, you know, explore the realms of that first before doing a huge investment in something else. The next furniture piece that I think you don't need and you might be wasting money on is the sideboard. So what is a sideboard? So a sideboard can mean many different things for many people. It could be a console table, it could be a dresser, it could just be a cabinet that you have in your dining room. So when someone says sideboard, they traditionally talk about what you have in your dining room. And you know, in generations past, they had sideboards and curio cabinets. We've kind of decreased the number of curio cabinets, but a sideboard is something many, many people have in their dining room. Sideboards actually have a ton of potential because they can be used to hold your dishes. So if you have fine china or you have dishware for the holidays, that's how a lot of people store them. Now, I will say that if you're not using a proper curio cabinet or something that properly um, holds up your fine dinnerware, that might be might not be the safest way to you know store it. I also find that in younger generations, we just don't have that, right? We don't have special dishes. You might have china that you got from your wedding and otherwise you probably just have like the Ikea plates or something like that or a set you picked up from Crate and Barrel. We just don't have as many dishes because we don't have as grand of parties anymore. So we have this entire furniture piece typically in our dining room that doesn't really serve a purpose. And in dining rooms, especially dining rooms in, you know, closed concepts, they tend to be on the smaller side. They can accommodate the dining table, dining chairs, and the people in that space. So when it comes to Thanksgiving and, you know, the other big holidays, we often find that there's tons of people crowded into a room. And a main way we could get some space back would be from that sideboard. And a lot of people have sideboards, again, because it's what we've always had. But you don't need to invest in them anymore unless you really do have a ton of dishes to store. A lot of us have kitchen cabinets that we don't use, right? Those upper cabinets. Just get on a ladder when the time comes and put the things up there instead of investing in these really large pieces of furniture. Another reason why you don't need a sideboard is people use sideboards to add decor to a space. And that makes sense because it provides you with an additional surface. But style that dining table, right? The exact same display that you might do on your sideboard is something you could also use on your dining table. You can have your dining table styled all the time. And then when people come over, you just make that styling linear as opposed to something that really extends over top of the entire table. You also need to remember that a good way to dress a, a dining room or any space is to add art on the walls, to add mirrors, to add some interesting lighting. Decor doesn't have to be something that that is tabletop. And so if you don't buy that sideboard, you're saving money on that furniture piece, which again, just tends to be a little bit more expensive because it does have to be sturdy enough to hold all of that fine dinnerware, but you also don't have to pay for the decor to go on top. And I also often find that it just creates a, a lot of commotion in a room visually because, you know, people really struggle with styling. It's something that's always evolving for everyone. Um, do I do it in the groups of threes? Do I stagger the height? Do I do this? Do I do that? It just kind of eliminates that interior design dilemma to begin with. And again, we want to do what we can to make designing our space as easy as possible. So if you're eliminating that sideboard, you'll be able to have those larger dinner parties and your space can still look good. Just put some art or some mirrors up on that wall. Dress your floors with rugs and don't be afraid to decorate your table. Your table isn't just for plates. If you're not eating there all the time, decorate your dining room. Take advantage of all of that glorious space. Your dining table can be your sideboard temporarily. Mm -hmm. 
Now this one is gonna step on some toes, but this literally applies to me as well. The next thing that you're probably buying that you might be wasting money on is the vintage cutting board. And I'm saying this as I literally stare at a vintage cutting board. So I absolutely adore the way that they look. But things that are vintage these days tend to be a little bit more expensive. Now vintage is a good thing, right? Because it, it promotes sustainability and that's something that as a, a designer and as a human being, I need to put more forefront in my mind and that's something that you should do as well. But when it comes to vintage pieces, one, they tend to be more expensive right now. And two, you don't really know where they were before. So the vintage cutting boards are really popular in kitchens right now. People layer them. You do a black one, a brown one, a round one, a rectangular, a square one. It creates a really nice vignette on your countertop and one that makes sense because when you're designing a kitchen, you want to add decor that's practical. If you put a bunch of vases that have no utility, you can't put your utensils in them or anything, you're like, why are you decorating your kitchen? You can't even use your countertop. But with a cutting board, it makes more sense, right? Because you're like, okay, it looks nice on display and then I'm going to put it down and use it. Well, well, I hate to admit this, but what I found is that a lot of people who have these vintage cutting boards don't actually use them because you don't know who's touched them. They're not sealed and there, there's no there's no protecting them, right? So cutting on them damages them more and you don't know what's seeping into your food and safety comes first. So while we love the look of these vintage cutting boards, a lot of the times people aren't actually using them. So we're spending $100, $200, $300 on these cutting boards and that's really expensive for something that we can't actually use. So instead of buying vintage cutting boards, I, I might say just buy, you know, the one from Ikea. I know, I know it doesn't look the same, but it actually has utility. Now, if you're okay with using the vintage cutting board, not knowing, you know, what you're doing into it or what's seeping into your food, that's fine. But I just have found that people spend a lot of money on them. And I don't necessarily think that you get the return because you're still buying another cutting board. You're still, you know, really struggling in the kitchen to find a surface to cut on. Your kitchen should be a space that is laid out beautifully for you um, and works for your lifestyle. So if you're cooking all the time, you shouldn't have to move your decor out of the way. Last but not least, people love having cheese boards now. People love charcuterie boards, right? And again, that's a lot of times what you use these cutting boards for. But again, if you don't feel confident that you can put your cheese on it or whatever it is, it's not really fulfilling the role. So get something a little bit more practical. Maybe skip out on the vintage and get something new here. Buy something else vintage again so that you can be a little bit more sustainable. But this is something I think people are just pouring a lot of money into that isn't always the most safe and most practical. So I'd probably say skip out on this one. The next item that you're probably wasting money on is the lumbar pillow. So I'm not talking about like those lumbar pillows that you get from Brookstone. Do you know what Brookstone is? Let me know down in the comments. Brookstone is like the best store in the world. They don't have them anymore, but they basically have all of these travel goods. So they're nice lumbar pillows for traveling. Those are phenomenal. Buy those forever. But I'm talking about the lumbar pillow that you'd put on your bed or on your sofa. So a lumbar pillow, it is a rectangular shaped pillow as opposed to a square pillow. And you normally put it in front of your pillow arrangement on your bed, or you might put it on your sofa. And they look very nice. They look very, 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 very nice. But in terms of practicality, they have little to no use. I mean, I guess you could use it to support your lumbar spine, but I'll be honest, I don't think a lot of people do that just because of the distance between the back of the sofa and your back. It's such a far distance now that it, it's just not actually actually used for its intended purpose. So the whole point of this is that like people don't use it to actually support them. And it's not like the most comfortable pillow to put your head on. So if you're taking a nap on your sofa or on your bed, you're not like, oh, you know what? I got to get that lumbar pillow. You're like, oh no, I want a Euro pillow. I want a standard pillow. It just is an uncomfortable pillow. Um, so I think you're wasting money on it. Now, if you get a lumbar pillow that has a really nice um, sham on it or cover on it, and it's really cheap, go ahead and buy that. But I find that finding a good lumbar pillow cover is like a hundred dollars seventy nine dollars and I'm like ma'am what that's too much money that to me is too much money I think just for its utility um, it's too expensive 
I've also found that a lot of people just don't know how to style a lumbar pillow, myself included. So when you think about Restoration Hardware, they have lumbar pillows on the sofas and what they'll do is they'll have a big euro, maybe a 26 by 26 with a lumbar in front of it or two euros and a lumbar in front. And I think that that looks really nice, but that normally sits in the middle of the sofa. And how many people want to pick up those pillows from the middle of the sofa just to sit down? No, you want to be able to sit down on your sofa really easily. You don't want to have to find a place for your pillows, which is why I have had like a personal vendetta against pillows my entire life because I think they're in the way. If they're not comfortable, they're, they're just not coming in my house, which is why we only have like two throw pillows on each sofa. What I will also say is you often see lumbar pillows on very, very large sofas. So Restoration Hardware, Studio McGee, I love both of those brands, but they have massive furniture and it's very expensive furniture. So they have these massive pieces. So of course you can have these lumbar pillows because there's so much side space on either side to sit that it doesn't matter that that pillow is taking up so much space. You never have to touch it. You never have to restyle it. But for most people, that's not practical. So it's just a pillow that's in a way, it's not very comfortable and finding a sham for it just tends to be very very expensive so I just say skip out on it use some euro pillows instead of getting lumbar pillows get different sizes of euro pillows or you know overstuff some and normal stuff the other ones and you'll get the same look just be sure to layer things appropriately if you have a white sofa do not put a white pillow right next to the white sofa maybe put a different pattern a different color something like that and, and make it variable make them different sizes and you're good to go you don't have to get the lumbar Now, the next thing that you are buying that you probably don't need, it's not really a thing. It is a group of items. I think it is tables. <laughs> is that the word I would use? Okay, you guys will hear me and then you'll decide what I should have labeled this. So what I often find is that people have multiple places to eat in the home, which is such a luxury. I, I'm so grateful for that, right? You'll have a dining room, you'll have an eat-in kitchen, and you'll also have an island, right? So you have a dining table and a dining room, you'll have a kitchen table in the eating kitchen area, and then you'll also have the counter stools at the island. This is amazing. This is a land of opportunity. But that stuff is expensive. Okay, so buying a dining chair at this point in time, a high quality dining chair, the lowest you're gonna spend per chair is around $250. That's not including taxes and that's not including shipping. So if you're seating six people, if you're seating eight people, that is a lot of money per room that you're spending just on the seating. So if you had those three dining places, I want you to eliminate one. I want you to stop buying dining furniture from one of those places. Now hear me out hear me out. So sure, you could eat in all of those places, but chances are you don't. Most people will eat in their eat-in kitchen or you eat at the kitchen island and you'll eat in a dining room if it's a big holiday. So if you, if you take a step back, think about how you actually occupy your space. If you actually sit down at a proper dining table in your designated dining room, if you don't actually do that, save your money and repurpose the space. Maybe your kids will have a whole new space to do your homework. Maybe your brand new baby will actually have a new playroom. There, there's, there's a world of opportunity there and a lot of those opportunities save you a lot of money because they just aren't as expensive as a nice rug a nice dining table and all of those chairs The next item you're probably spending a lot of money on and it's something that you don't need is a fireplace. Now, if you live in a place like Pittsburgh, I live in Pittsburgh, right, where everyone has fireplaces. If you don't have a fireplace in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, and for some reason also your bathroom sometimes, you don't live in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is chock full of fireplaces, but I digress. So a lot of people um, will opt in for a fireplace and fireplaces are beautiful. Fireplaces are immaculate. If you have it in the budget to get one, definitely get one. But I find that a lot of people waste money on this because a lot of people don't actually opt for a wood burning fireplace or they choose not to use it. So fireplaces look really nice. I do agree that they look nice. I love a good fireplace, but people spend a lot of money on them and they don't use them. The point of a fireplace is to actually heat a home, right? Because you put wood in it and you burn it and it produces heat. And that is the point of it. Um, the, the fireplace in the home that I grew up in, it, you literally put a grate in there and you can make hot dogs or anything else in there. That is the purpose of the fireplace. But I feel like the, the, 
the wow of the fireplace is lost so often in so many homes because people don't actually put wood in them. They don't actually light a fire. And the allure of the fireplace isn't just in the tile that you put around it or the bricks that you put around it. It's also in the actual fire, the illumination, the way the light from the fire hits the surrounding of the space. Um, there's so much power in that. It creates that ambiance. Think of a fireplace as like... Um, a hundred task lamps or something like that. It just really holds that much power. And I often find that people don't actually use them. So I don't really see the point in installing one if you're not going to let it live up to its potential. Now this also applies to the electric fireplace. And I know um, this has been a source of contention on my channel, but I feel like you shouldn't invest in an electric fireplace if you cannot put it inside of something. If you cannot have an encasement for it, if you do not have it within a console or something like that, I think they do, they just kind of stick out like a sore thumb because you're like, okay, I can see the wires. I can see that it's not real fire. So how is this working? It needs to be encased in something. So if you can, if you can build something, I mean, it, it becomes an expensive problem project, right? Just getting the, the fireplace online, it just doesn't cut it. So I think it doesn't look as high end unless you have thousands and thousands of dollars to really elevate it. So I think for the most part, people should skip out on it. If you're going to do electric, you have to, you know, make it look built in. And if you're going to build a real fireplace, use it, right? We we all all too often now we buy things and we don't actually use them for their intended purpose but why would we waste money on something that doesn't isn't providing its service there's so many other things that you could spend money on instead of getting a fireplace that you don't use you could buy you could invest in an artist and actually get your first piece of original artwork instead of doing that you could you know i don't know go to a better grocery store there's so many other things that you could do with your money which i think is just a little bit more worthwhile so when it comes to the fireplace, if you're not going to use it, if you're not going to make it look built in and sophisticated, just skip it. You're wasting your money on it. And if, if you have heat and you're paying your heating bill and you don't like the warmth from the fire anyway, you don't need it, right? It is just an extra thing that you're buying. Like the fireplace, if you have a piano and you don't play piano or no one in the family plays piano, or if the piano is not significant to you, please don't buy a piano. So I think that we buy things for no reason, right? I buy things for no reason all the time. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, you see sometimes I buy things because it's cool. We should buy things that have utility to us. So pianos are huge, right? They're big. They really have to be worked into a design. When I work with a client and they have a piano, I get all the measurements, I rotate it, I think about how someone can come and play it, how two people could crowd around it. It's, it's a whole thing, working a piano into a space. And so if you don't play the piano um, and it has no significance to you, don't buy it just because it, you saw it in a magazine and you thought it looked good. Um, pianos are expensive, uh, you know, keyboards are expensive grand pianos are a lot of money and honestly if you live in a condo and you don't have a big freight elevator you're gonna have to you know hire a crane to put it through a window it just is really really expensive i know you're like why are you even talking about this because we see these things in magazines and on youtube and people make you want to buy them but you don't play the piano, you're not using the piano, there's no reason to get it. Um, because what utility does it have? It doesn't make anyone think that you play an instrument because if they ask you to play it and all you can do is play Mary Had a Little Lamb, well, I don't think it's really done what you wanted it to do. So just like the fireplace, if you're not going to use it for its intended purpose, don't buy it. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Those were a few items that you don't need, right? There are things that people say, you need to buy this, you need to buy this. You just don't need these items. You can live without them and a lot of times they just are an extra expense and we're all about crafting a luxurious space affordably. Do you have any of these things? What did you do to downsize and save money when you were decorating your space? Let's chat about it down in the comments. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video and check me out on Instagram and until next time, have a beautiful day.